Daryl Strawberry, Ichiro Suzuki, Tony Batista. These guys had memorable batting stances. And then there are the pitchers with instantly recognizable windups such as Louis Tian, Dan Quisenberry, Hideo Nomo, and Orlando Hernandez. Some would say their kind is not for long in the world of professional baseball thanks to big data, modern coaching, and conservative front offices. Well, I certainly hope the future isn't homogeneity. Let's talk about the decline of wacky batting stances and pitching windups. In 2023, Leo Sepkowitz wrote an interesting article for GQ titled The Long Slow Death of the Wacky Batting Stance. He observed that there are fewer major league hitters with twitches, waves, and body kinks. In other words, things have gotten a lot more streamlined. I hadn't thought about it a lot before, but he's on to something. Take Kevin Euclid. He held the bat up high and gripped the handle with hands apart to make final adjustments before the pitch arrived to the plate. Who does something as unusual as that nowadays? And we could discuss many others. Joe Morgan's distinctive elbow flap. Gary Sheffield's rhythmic bat wave. Nomar Garciaparra's long ritual for getting set by adjusting batting gloves and rhythmically toe tapping. Such lengthy idiosyncratic routines aren't feasible in an era of pitch clocks. How batters position themselves seems more homogenized, with the legs relatively still and hands shoulder high to produce a compact, efficient swing. Sabermetrics, says Sepkowitz, explains the trend, and it seems true. Unusual approaches have more ways to die in an age of youth batting instructors and video analysis. Science, it turns out, isn't necessarily good for individuality. Babe Ruth's legendary swing with its huge shift of weight from back to front foot would surely be deemed inefficient because it left the slugger so off balance when he swung and missed. Now, this isn't to say Hitch's high hands and leg kicks are entirely gone from baseball. You still have players like Bo Bichette whose swing and follow through are fluid and atypical. And there still is memory of someone like the instantly recognizable Barry Bonds coming to the dish with his efficient rhythmic power stroke. But we have entered a different era. New players have all moved through the ranks of professional baseball with front offices using StatCast and video analysis to make decisions and mold their athletes. Players receive instruction to avoid uncommon stances from professional hitting coaches. The same trends apply to pitching instruction. There is a laser focus on efficient mechanics and reducing the risk of injury. Teams record the pitcher's every movement for analysis and discussion. Pitching coaches, like hitting coaches, seek to reform bad habits and disapprove of what's outside of the norm. After all, the job of scouts is to project a pitcher's health over time. Will he become a hurler worthy of the organization's financial investment? Is the windup likely to stress the arm and lead to injury? Such Calculations do not favor the abnormal or unorthodox. Other trends work against atypical pitching approaches as well. Major League Baseball has ordered umpires to step up enforcement of the Bach rule. That is, any motion that mimics a normal delivery but stops short is punished. So today's pitchers must be careful about any movement umpires might call a Bach. But even in the modern era, atypical pitchers have not disappeared entirely. Tim Lincecum, the 5 foot 11 inch kid from Washington, was called the freak because he did not look like a power pitcher. Steve Goldman at Baseball Prospectus writes, Lincecum is quote, living proof that for all the talk about proper mechanics, there isn't a one size fits all solution to throwing a baseball. It was Lincecum's unusually long stride and his flexible torso that allowed him to generate power and deceive the game's best hitters. In other words, his effectiveness derived precisely from his unorthodox delivery. So long as he could control the unusual motion, that is. 
And that should come as no surprise because bodies differ and statistical probabilities are just that. Probabilities and not certainties. What might be inefficient or unbalanced for most might just be another man's secret sauce. I remember trying to swing a bat like Daryl Strawberry when I was a kid. I loved that swing. And countless kids have surely tried to mimic Ichiro Suzuki's stretch, shoulder wiggle, and squat. It's fun to see player personality expressed on the pitcher's mound and in the batter's box. And I hope analytics and modern coaching doesn't deprive us of tomorrow's strawberries and lincecums. In the comments, I'm curious to hear who you think has the most distinctive batting stance today or wind up, as well as which players I didn't mention. And thanks for watching.